Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Guild. Dungeons and Dragons. Two main things appear in the name. And I don't know about you if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons. I still have not fought a full adult dragon. Well, let me let me let me pause real quick and I'm going to take a second and read some lore from the dragons of D&D. So dragons or worms were very powerful and magical creatures. There were several types of dragons, the most common of which were chromatic and metallic, which were evil and good, respectively. They were an ancient race. Few species that still exist can claim longer lineage. Dragons were the bane of the creator races of Toril. They had their own realm during the first recorded exploits of the elves. And in recent times, the dragons of Toril were nearly all reclusives, or at the very least, deceptive to their true nature, living amongst other species in polymorph form. And I mean, if you want to look at all the kind of named dragons in the D&D lore, the list is just endless on D&D Wiki and um, we're, we're keeping on going. We're keeping on going. So uh, I thought I would do this video because essentially I think Dungeons and Dragons needs more dragons. And for this I really wanted to do a video on the ultimate dragon. Now as I said I'm still fairly new to D&D so there's a lot I have to learn so keep me right in the comment section below. But I found a fantastic model from Artisan Guild and it is called Chromatur the Elder. But before we jump into actually painting the model and discussing it a wee bit more, what dragon are we going to make? What dragon are we going to paint? Well, as I've never fought a dragon, and this is the first dragon I've ever painted, and it's the biggest mini that I have ever painted, there's only one dragon you can start with when it comes to D&D, and well, that's the one on the box. Yes, we are talking about the ancient red dragon. The odour of sulphur and smoke surrounds a red dragon, whose sweat back horns and spinal frill define its silhouette. Its beak snout vents smoke at all times, and its eyes dance with flame when it's angry. This thing is scarily strong. The lore behind this, there's just levels and levels and levels and levels and levels. People have wrote books on this thing. And I always think it's great having these type of creatures in your world that aren't the big bad. There's a greater underlying tale to your world that you have built and it levels around this insane ancient creature that can literally level your party. So without further ado, let's get into some painting and let's show off the model. Okay, so here we go. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually take off these wings. I didn't glue them on because I thought this would make the model slightly easier to paint as it is so big. Now it's prime time. Starting off with some Chaos Black just to give it that base coat. And we're gonna move on to white for a zenithal highlight. And there we go, we can kind of see the lighter areas where the sun will be hitting it. Starting off with corn red. This is going to be our base coat for the whole model. So the idea is just to slap this on all over the grey. And coming in with a smaller finer brush later just to tidy up all the details. Moving on to a contrast paint, flesh terrors red. Again, I'm just going to try and coat over the big bulky areas of the red. This will kind of help pick out some of the definitions as well as it just gives it a darker look. Angoro Flesh, so this is going to be for kind of any of the underbelly scales. And you can see that I'm using like a mix of the two brushes. Classic Agrax Earthshade. This is going to give it a bit of a shine and an earthier look. As you can see, I'm just coating. There's the, coat, the face coated, the underbellies were coated, everything's coated. And there you can see it kind of taking a wee bit of shape. Mephiston Red, just using a bit of a dry brushing technique. And again, just going in with a smaller brush to pick out any finer details, anything that I really want to pop. McCarth Flesh, so same thing, just dry brushing this on over, over the top of Ungar Flesh. Evil Sun Scarlet. So again, I'm just going over those Mephiston red highlights and just taking it one level higher. There you can see I've already just done the face, I forgot to hit record, but uh, you can see those kind of edges really starting to highlight and stand out.
just doing it with the fingers and the shoulders and the elbows anything that I really just want a kind of more cleaner edge to and the tail and the toes So Ushanti bone, you can kind of guess what this is going to be for. Anything that is bone, so essentially horns or nails, I'm going to use this. I'm not going to do the teeth because I really want the teeth to stand out. Um, flask gets yellow, so this is going to be for the best part, the eyes. And our boy is done, but we can't forget we need the wings. Oh my goodness, when I realized I still had to paint these wings. Sweet mercy. But yes, we're going to try a wee bit of a new technique on the channel. We're going to be doing some wet blending here. I want these wings to kind of have a more skinny type tone. And then I'm going to darken it down later on. So as you can see, I'm just I'm using a blend of Ricard Flesh and Corn Red. I'm kind of swirling it together with lots of water. Just to try and get this kind of mixed pinky tone. And once that's done, I just go over with the contrast pen to get the flesh tires red, just into any little crevices that were missed. But also this will kind of darken down the wings. And as you can see, it's giving it more of an aged kind of bottom thing. Null and oil, so this will basically bring everything down on a darker level. It'll kind of, I want these wings to look like they're stained with charcoal. So I'm gonna give these one or two coats with this kind of stuff just to darken it down a bit. And now for the final step, we're going to just try and stick these in with some good old super glue. I really regretted this, I should have painted the actual wing, the whole thing before gluing it on. As you can see in the background, I've already done the, the second one. But this was a nightmare because it was just so big and fiddly. So try and get more super glue in there and the final wing. And we are done. And there we have it. Look at the absolute size of this thing. It is insane. It is by far the biggest model that I've ever painted. And I absolutely loved every single minute of it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive, this mini deep dive into dragons in Dungeons and Dragons. As I said, I think it would be great to see more and more of these in more campaigns. So if you enjoyed the video, please, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the like button or the dislike button, whatever it is. I always appreciate the comments and getting a bit of chat with you guys that are watching these videos. So thank you so much. I can't wait to see you again on the Fantasy Guild. Peace.